Hi, this is Janos, it's Real World Audio. This is my little channel. And if you uh, want to see this channel grow, then, then hit like on the videos. If you want to see more of my videos because you just randomly found this video, then hit subscribe and that notification bell so then YouTube will notify you if a new video comes out. And if you want to see this channel continue in the future, then click on the buy me a coffee link and then you can donate as little as two dollars or if you want there is no limit how much you can donate to see this channel in the future. Because so far I have donated thousands of hours of my life to this channel without compensation and uh, it's getting harder and harder to justify this drain to my family uh, just by you know me sitting here talking and while I could do you know just work on the plumbing or, or paint the car or something like that do something useful instead of just wasting my time so you can change this you can change <laughs> time wasting into a productive uh, activity by donating even as little as two dollars and then my channel can continue in the future. So now let's get to the topic for today which is a reflection on this video. This video was posted, I made, I made it in 2021. It's already over a year old and I think this is one of the gems of the channel and uh, and there's less than 400 views on it, so it had a few views, but it, it did not become like a viral video. And the title is Mind-Blowing Audio Science. What we observe is only limited by voltage. And uh, this is a little explanation of how, uh, what is the most critical characteristic of an amplifier that will give you the dynamic resolution. And, uh, and I, I just saw that Edward, Edward Brockman uh, put recently a comment on it. And, and, and he put in the comment, so how come all the dynamic information is still present in a 2 volt RMS signal? And, and he is saying that because in this video I said that uh, the higher the high voltage in your amplifier is. So if we are talking about transistorized equipment, it's called rail voltage. And when we talk about tube equipment, it's called the B plus voltage. So when your rail or B plus is higher, that will give you a higher dynamic resolution. And I explain it, the physics of it in the video. And this is something that is an absolute fact in physics. This is not something that's uh, subjective and open to debate, like uh, how much THD contributes to, to how we uh, interpret the music, how the brain likes the music or not, and, and lots of factors in audio, like uh, whether like um, L uh, live cabinets or dead loudspeaker cabinets. So all of these are things that are really subjective and then you can get uh, um, ideas to support or uh, unsupport any of those. But, but this voltage is, is just physics. Basically that when you have a higher voltage available of your, at your disposal, then you have a, a higher voltage range that you can cover and you also have what is really critical, a higher electromotive force. And, and the higher electromotive force is the response to Edward's comment because he is saying that, uh, you know, what comes out of your uh, digital source is just two volts. So does it mean that how can it contain the entire dynamic range when uh, I showed an example for like oscilloscopes where like a 10,000 volt rail or 10,000 volt high voltage oscilloscope has a much higher dynamic range 
than an oscilloscope with just a thousand volt supply. Uh, so, so why is that then? How that's useful of seeing a two volt signal? And, uh, and is there an information in the two volts where we really need to have like a thousand volts or 10,000 to hear the most? And, and, and the trick is here because there's a big difference between the information contact, the package that we are viewing and the instrument that brings that package to real life. So, so in response to audio, uh, to Edward, all the dynamic information is present in the two volt signal that goes from that two volt RMS down to that millivolt or microvolt level signal. And that's contained there. And even when we go back to the origin of that signal, so not what comes out of your computer, what was recorded, when you, the singer sings into a microphone or the music instrument is picked up by a microphone, is just recording a millivolt signal. So like a thousand times less or even lower than one volt. Uh, so how come the entire dynamic range is present in a signal that comes out with a 2-3 millivolt dynamic peak? I mean, 2-3 uh, millivolt RMS peak, that's just really tiny. How come a full signal is there? And why you need like a 1000 volt amplifier? Why will it be better than, let's say, a 1 volt amplifier? Even 1 volt is tremendously bigger than millivolt. Logic would say that uh, a 3 millivolt amplifier would be enough to replay music that was recorded at 3 millivolt level, right? And, and you are absolutely right in case you are listening it at the 3 millivolt level. So if you listen to that signal, when, when we look at Edward's comment, if you listen to your DAC at a 2 volt level, then 2 volt is enough for you. But the problem is at the 2 volt level, what's happening is that uh, it's coming out with a uh, with such a low power output that it is inaudible. So while it contains the full dynamic range uh, and it is perfect for storage, it's perfect at the line level, at the 2 volt level, there's everything there, but we cannot hear it. Uh, and, and it's because uh, when we look at the 2 volt peak of it, if we hook it up to a headphones or you, you hook it up to your audio system with an appropriate transformer, because that 2 volt comes with a 2 volt signal, but the current is too low to drive a loudspeaker. So you need to transform it to high enough amperage, high enough current to make it sense for your loudspeakers. And when you do that, you will get a very, very soft music. And it will be so soft that the uh, peaks, the dynamic peaks of it will be barely audible. And, and, and the soft details, which are the lower bits of the dynamics, will be disappearing. You won't be able to hear them. And in order to hear them, we need uh, amplification. We need the preamplifier, we need the amplifier. And that's the device, or those are the devices that amplify this voltage and amplify the current to make it audible. And uh, the way technology works is that the higher voltage your active stage has, the higher the electromotive force is to read out the information at the lowest level. So basically what's happening is that your information is contained in whatever format it's contained. So if you are reading out uh, digital, you will get, let's say, the 2 volt signal. If you are reading out LPs, if you have low output uh, moving coil cartridge, you might be getting 
0.1 millivolt out of it and that 0.1 millivolt has all the dynamic range to it and when you use uh, the amplification that's where you need that very high voltage to read out the low level signals and you guessed it right the lower the voltage you are reading out the higher voltage you need to amplify the lowest bits of it and that works uh, in electronics so basically here we are reading out electrons because it's in the once the cartridge reads the music it's in the electric domain uh, we are looking at the voltage potential of the electrons bouncing around and to and we need to amplify the differences between the, the lowest energy state of the electrons and the highest energy state of the electrons and we can only read it out especially in that uh, microvolt or nanovolt level so when your cartridge reads out 0.1 millivolt then the low level information will be carried in the nanovolt level scale in high nanovolt but still in the nanovolt and to read that out we need very high voltages and that's why tube amplifiers uh, and tube preamps do make a very nice um, addition there and um, yeah so I think that's it that's the answer for Edward's question is that uh, there's the stored information and that carries the dynamic range which it carries and if we want to read it out accurately we need as high voltage as possible and when the voltage is lower then the lower range of that uh, information that's carried in your 2 volt source or 1 millivolt or 0 0.1 millivolt source is will get lost and why is that because when you look at it let's say this is the the scale here's the 2 volt and let's say this is the 1 millivolt and here let's say this is the 0 0.1 millivolt can you read something yes and now between 2 volt and, and 1 millivolt there's like a 2000 fold difference so what that does that mean so if there's a thousand fold difference that's 60 db 2000 that's 66 db so when the lowest signal is 1 millivolt highest is 2 volt rms then we are getting 66 db dynamic range and this is something that every audio gear can easily reproduce basically and when we go down like 10 fold lower to 0 0.1 millivolt that adds plus 20 db dynamic range so now it's 88 86 db <laughs> dynamic range and uh, and when you have an average audio gear let's say you have a nice transistorized amplifier it will have no problem reading between 1 volt to 2 volt in a linear fashion and your transistorized gear will read out this 0.1 millivolt as well but there it will not be linear because it does not have enough voltage to give that lower than millivolt scale in a linear fashion and uh, and you are not finding this in the commercials in the data sheets because they don't show linearity for very low level signals all they do is linearity for very high level signals which is a, a, a no-brainer thing to do really you just need a big enough power supply to have high linearity at the high power region and it doesn't matter tube amps solid state amps it's not one is better than the other at high power you have good linearity you get good accuracy linearity is accuracy when you have a good power supply that's the end of the story but for the low level resolution in dynamic levels you need voltage to keep the linearity in that region and uh, and that's just physics that's defined by laws of physics 
and uh, and that's where voltage counts. So I hope this was uh, this uh, um, was useful. And and even though when you read, I, I I want to make one addition to this is that you see here we are talking about 66 dB and then plus 20 dB and if you go lower you get more and more dBs on the lower scale and uh, you say okay I, I have this $200 Yamaha amplifier or whatever uh, it's solid state and it says that like the noise floor is like uh, 110 dB below uh, the um, 1 watt level or something like that so it's just but that doesn't mean that you have that 100 dB accurate dynamic range available for you. No, it just means where is the noise floor. But how well it can handle the low level dynamic details, that number does not tell you that. It does not tell you whether at that low dB level the, the, the amplification accuracy is like that or does it drop like that. So that and that's that's the big thing and that's where voltage voltage is the difference so your real voltage is low then you will have something like that or just flatlining or doing something silly or keeping a linear amplification so thank you edward for that uh, excellent question please like subscribe buy me a coffee bye bye